Good morning and good evening and every everything in between. I am so glad that you are connecting in with us today. I hope and pray that uh, you are doing well. Uh, I mean, is anything is anything ever a hundred percent a okay? No, but when you have the Lord, regardless, regardless of what is happening or what's going on, God is with you. And I hope I hear a hearty amen coming uh, through the computer. It's Monday. Happy Monday. And uh, we have um, a special treat for you in the, in, the idea, in the area of music. We actually have a seafarer, a recording of a seafarer singing. And then Mark is going to come and bring an encouraging message to each and every one of us. Again, I cannot tell you how I hope this chapel service throughout the the year has been truly uplifting to you um it has been for me and um i cannot say enough about staying and being in god's word god has just that way of speaking to you again regardless of what's going on in your life and um it speaks volumes be in god's word and here is an opportunity for you to do so let's pray precious lord I lift up the day before you. I lift up each listening ear, each seafarer, each uh, family, each friend, uh, whoever is out there, Lord, that you would just, through Mark, through the singing, just speak to their hearts. Uh, Lord, we all need it. Uh, it's We need our physical food. We need our spiritual food to get us through the day. So, Lord, use this next 20, 30 minutes to glorify your name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Here is our singing.
Amen. Thank you so much, Christina, and thank your friend for us. Uh, that is really uh, lovely, and uh, we just really appreciate the opportunity to worship uh, with you. And I know that you wish worship with us on a regular basis. If there's other seafarers out there that are musically inclined, uh, I'm not going to just say we will absolutely play your song, but we will review it, and we would love to uh, to have it in, in, as part of our, our worship time. And, uh, and I mean, I believe me, when Jeannie, Wendy, Bob uh, sing, it is awesome. We've had a lot of variety uh, with other people as well. And I'm very thankful that God has given us the ability to worship him in song. And so today uh, we're going to look at a very special passage of scripture. And I am excited to be able to share this with you and to go over it with you. And so if you will, turn to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Once again, uh, we are looking at Moses' final discourse with the people, his final word of encouragement to them. And today is something totally supernatural. I really believe that... Uh, What's come out of Moses' mouth is straight from God. It's inspired, obviously. But um, you can't look into the future on your own. Uh, I would love to look into the future and tell everyone, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Moses does that. And when the people are going to consider his words every time they read them from that point on forward, they're going to be encouraged because they will have understood that, okay, so we messed up, we blew it, there were consequences, yet God did not give up on us as a people. And, uh, and so I'm sure that the people who were in Babylonian exile would read this and come to that conclusion, but they could not have imagined that this would all happen in 1948. Okay, so that's where we're going with this. And I am, I don't know, I'm just thrilled that we can look at this today. Hopefully you'll be challenged to think about the fact that God is in control. We've said it over and over and over again, but God is in control. God has a plan. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for my life. We're not specifically mentioned in the Bible, right? Unless you're a Jewish person, uh, how we are mentioned in the Bible is when the Bible refers to Gentiles, right? When, if you're a believer, that, uh, that there is an amazing promise for all of us because the Bible says we are grafted in to to the promise, to the the uh, the hope of salvation, we're grafted in like a, a branch grafted into a vine that gains nourishment, that gains life. That's us. But we can observe what God is doing through the nation of Israel and realize that even today, the Bible is speaking. And it is amazing. And so let's get started. Let's look at uh, chapter 30 of Deuteronomy. Please read along in your language, uh, your heart language as well. And so here's what it says. In the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses that I have listed for you, and when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, Take heart, take to heart all these instructions. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with all your heart and all your soul and all, uh, all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has scattered you. Even though you are banished to the ends of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back again. The Lord your God will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors, and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you 
even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. So let's just pause there for a second and consider <laughs> the situation uh, up until 19, well, I guess we need to uh, think about first the Babylonian exile and why I believe that this passage refers to current day rather than then. Notice that it says that they were scattered to the ends of the earth. They were banished to the ends of the earth. That really wasn't the case. Uh, oh, I'm sorry that the text is being blocked by the, uh, the camera. Anyway, uh, that really wasn't the case in the Babylonian exile. In the Babylonian exile, the people were exiled to Babylon. And they were scattered somewhat around the world, but not like this. Also, when it says that he will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors and you will possess that land again, when they came back to the, to the nation of Judah, uh, they really didn't have possession of the land. They were controlled by other countries. They were under Babylonian rule. They were under Greek rule. They were under Roman rule. And so uh, they never truly had the possession of the land until 1948. And so uh, it's just an amazing thing when you consider how God initially promises here. There are many other passages, okay, that talk about how Israel would become a nation again. And I can't wait until we get to the book of Ezekiel and talk about the dry bones coming together and and forming a, a person and God's spirit being breathed into that nation. Uh, that ha the coming together has is, has been going on now for a long time, but uh, God's spirit entering into that nation hasn't happened yet, but I believe it's coming. And once again, I would encourage you if you have not gone on YouTube and watch the testimonies from One for Israel, start. It is going to bless you so much to hear how God is calling Jews and to himself to have a loving relationship, not dependent on the law, but dependent on what Jesus did on the cross. And to hear those testimonies, one right after another, and how they share, well, the Bible, the New Testament is written by Jews, for Jews, so that they could know that Jesus is their Messiah. Nobody ever told them that. Wow, how cool, how horrible that Satan has gotten away with a lie. But the Holy Spirit is opening people's eyes and revealing to them the truth. And so people are beginning to turn to Jesus, to discover Jesus, to make him their Lord and Savior. And what an awesome thing we can be participants in that and what a blessing it is to be alive during this time where we've actually seen this come true i'll tell you before 1948 unfortunately a lot of people could not imagine uh, israel becoming a nation again and a lot of theologians were like totally baffled okay so what does this mean if israel is not a nation how can these promises ever come true? And so they began to decide, well, maybe we'll take the church and make it so that it is the recipient of all the promises to Israel. If you really read the Bible uh, with a, a, a word for word and an honest, you know, it, it, you know, that it says this is for the tribes of Judah, or this is for God's people, you really have to massage or bend scripture to make that a reality. And it's unfortunate because some of those were very good theologians. They just didn't have enough imagination to allow themselves to get to uh, the fact that Israel could become a nation again. Um, so it's anyway, that's a whole nother sideline, but we have the benefit of seeing it come true and seeing that God can work uh, beyond our imaginations, that God is truly in control. And when God's word says things that we can't imagine, like the temple will be rebuilt. 
It can happen. It will happen because God's word says so. All right, let's move on. Uh, okay, so here's, here's a very cool passage. In verse 6, the Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul and so you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all these cur curses on your enemies and those who hate and persecute you. Then you will again obey the Lord and keep all his commands that I am giving you today. What does God want from his people? And I'm not just talking about the Jews. I'm talking about people that have a sincere desire to have a relationship with God who want to uh, to know God, it says right here that he wants us to love him with all our heart and soul so that we'll live. And it's awesome that God said he was going to do the, be the one that would make the change in their heart. Isn't that cool? Because uh, if you're like, yeah, when I get to a point where I can be a better person, that's when I'm going to follow God. Good luck with that. You're never going to follow God if you're dependent on your own strength. But God changes people's hearts. God will change the hearts of your descendants as well if you will commit to him today. I'll tell you why. I believe that. Because if you live for God, there's a much greater chance that your children will. If you don't live for God, your children will use that as an excuse because, oh, that's how mom acted or that's how dad acted. So I don't have to, I don't have to go to all that trouble of trying to obey God. You will impact your family if you live for God. We can't control what ultimately happens with our children. I can only imagine uh, with Billy Graham, when Franklin Graham was rebellious uh, it must have been horrific for him and his ministry. What are we going to do about this Franklin Graham guy? Uh, but yet you look at Franklin Graham today and how God has used him in an amazing way. So don't think that if you choose to make good choices and your kids stumble, that that means, oh, I guess it didn't work. You got to trust God for what he's doing and leave it to him. Focus on yourself and allow the rest to be done by the Lord. So I, I want to speak to people that have a hard time with the nation of Israel, that are listening to things like uh, Israel is a bad nation. For some reason, they are being uh, portrayed as persecuting Palestinians and all that. All that is lies. And, and here's the thing. You can't ignore verse 7. It says that the Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and those who hate and persecute you. Okay, do you, which side do you want to be on? And here's the thing, it's not just this passage. You go back to Genesis and God promised there that he would bless those who bless his people and curse those who curse his people. Choose a side. To those that are in the United Methodist Church that are calling on the Biden administration to do all these crazy things against Israel, you're on the wrong side. Pay attention to God's word. Love God's people. Pray for them. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But I can promise you this. If you want to see people be blessed in the Middle East, pray for Israel. Pray for Israel. Pray for God's people. Pray that revival will come, but pray for that. Don't pray against Israel. Get over it. Quit politicizing this and get on board with God and his word. Verse 8 uh, is just an awesome thing. Then you will again obey the Lord and keep all his commands that I am giving you today. So the nation of Israel isn't there yet. They're a very secular nation right now. That's why we need to pray for them. Pray that revival will come. Pray that they will understand the gospel. The answer is not going to be in, in the old system, in the old covenant. The answer is in the new covenant through the Messiah Jesus. And so we need to pray that they will understand that. Pray that we'll understand that. 
Uh, and then our, our last two verses. The Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous livestock, and he will cause your fields to produce abundant harvest. For the Lord your God will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors. The Lord your God will delight in you if you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in this book of instruction and if you turn to the Lord your God with your whole, your heart and soul. Um, so I don't know how it's working out with Israel being blessed because of their obedience right now. I believe that right now, Israel is seeing an amazing blessing through agriculture like nobody imagined. They are exporting agricultural technology to other parts of the world that is significantly blessing parts of Africa and other parts of the world. And I, I, we just couldn't have imagined it. But Israel is blessed by God. That's all I, I can say. And I pray that they will return to God. I pray that it, this whole thing will be even greater glory to God, that as they have had so many advances in medicine and, I don't know, they're brilliant people. And as God has blessed them that way, that they will, in in all of that, find a true relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, I did some slides the other day. I'm a little bit scared, but I want to just mention what prophecy is. And so this is from GodQuestions.com. And basically it says that prophecy is the most basic definition of a message from God, right? And so... Moses gets this message from God, and he is sharing it with the people, like I said, to encourage them. But imagine that Moses is thousands of years prior to this, thousands, and, and yet he sees into the future, and it's a blessing for us today. <clears throat> like I said before, uh, two times when Israel came back to the land— and, uh, and and there you can see those dates. And so that's, that's all I have for the PowerPoint. But as far as, uh, as far as uh, talking about Moses, there's another point about Moses that I have to bring up. That is that Moses doesn't get to go into the promised land. Moses disqualified himself from that. But that didn't mean God was done with him. Moses is going to soon uh, see his life on earth come to an end. Do you know, Jesus says something amazing. Jesus said that God is the God of Abraham. And that, you know, people are like, oh, Abraham, he's dead. And Jesus referred to the fact that God is the God of the living and not the dead. And that Abraham still is. And if you wondered about Moses... You can look ahead in all three, uh, they call them synoptic books of the, of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, talk about something that happened that's pretty amazing. And, uh, and so the, it's called the transfiguration. And the transfiguration, it's in Matthew 17, Mark uh, 9, and Luke 9. And if you know anything about the transfiguration, Jesus takes... Uh, Peter, James, and John up to uh, the mountain, and it's on that mountain that Jesus is there with Moses and Elijah. And so Moses makes an appearance in the New Testament. I think that's really cool, and it gives me hope. And here's the thing. If you're a believer and you have messed up, right, you've messed up and and you've suffered consequences. I just want to encourage you today. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because God can still use you. It may not be in the same capacity as before. But God can still use all of us. No matter what we're doing. Where we are. What our circumstances are. That God can use you to be a light to those around him. And I can tell you at the at Transfiguration, there's more to that 
uh, because of how Jesus reveal, reveals himself as God at that point, which blew the minds of the people that were there. I, I like That's all I can say. Uh, <laughs> but it's something that we don't fully understand, but it's totally awesome. But the fact that Moses is there is very encouraging to me. And so today, uh, if you're struggling with the idea that, that you've messed up, just know that you're not alone. <laughs> We've all messed up. And none of us is perfect. And God uses imperfect people for to accomplish his purposes. And so know that and be encouraged today. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you have been just following these chapel services out of curiosity, I believe that curiosity is a God-given thing. I really do. And, and I, I'm going to challenge you today to get off the fence to uh, to let go of whatever is holding you back, whatever is keeping you from fully committing your life to Christ, you need to let that go. Jesus is the most important thing. And think about this. As we are living in the fulfillment of prophecy, it seems to me, if we open our eyes and we pay attention, that we will understand that we are on the verge of seeing Jesus return. We are on the verge of seeing things in Revelation come true like I never imagined before. Are you ready? Are you ready? And the main way to be ready is to have a right relationship with God. That means we've got to give up things that are feeding the flesh, that are the sinful things in our life. We need to let go of those. We need to repent of that. That means turning your back on it. That means going towards God and letting go of the things that have caused us to stumble. And so I would encourage you today to, to repent and to receive and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior by asking him. And uh, there are so many different wonderful tools out there. I, I love talking about every uh, person.com or every the every student app. It's available in uh, so many languages, but you can go there and get answers. You can definitely send us a message if you have uh, questions or concerns. Please include us in your spiritual journey. And uh, you can send us an email at info, info at cpm.life, or you could send, you know, any one of us on staff by our first name at cpm.life. Uh, I, I, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you, and, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow.